<laughs> All right. Let's 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 get anything else before we get to um Mitchell Robinson and our and our center position. I just want to tell the captain, I'm with you. Send Bam out west. All that stuff is in here. Get out west. <laughs> Please. <laughs> get out of here. All right, so let's let's do our verses like we did um, last last week. And basically, for me, I feel like Brunson and Randall, until he's moved and he may never be moved, are the two guys that's basically the center of of this team, the center of our offense. And how do you which the three other players in the starting lineup? Who can you put around them? that's going to make them successful and make the team successful. So I see those guys as being able to get their own shot, but I also see both of them as being able to create for others. Randall has the gravity. He draws a lot of, a lot of double teams that opens up shots for others. Brunson can get into the key at will. And he's really good. Uh, top 10 finisher in the ramp and in, in the key. Um, I want to say, um, and sometimes he's real confident. He ain't even passing. <laughs> he ain't even passing it because he get in there. He's like, I can hit this shot. But if he does pass it, you want to have, you know, guys that can hit it. But in Mitch position, in, in, as far as the center is concerned, I feel like those guys, even though they were both successful in this crowded, they didn't have a lot of space and they were still successful. If we can get some space for them, I think they would be even better. You know, and with Mitch there and his guy right there in that in that dunk is um, spot, even if Mitch was to go out to the three point line, I wouldn't follow him. Right. Because I just know he's not going to he's not going to hit that shot. So this is not necessarily about who should replace Mitch. This is more about with these three guys I'm going to mention. Do you think they're better fits than Mitch or no? No, you 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 think that Mitch is a better fit for the Knicks than these um three guys. So the three guys that I want to um talk about are Towns, Turner, and Aiton. And again, this is not um this is about, you know, are we a better team with any of those guys? And obviously we have to take into consideration the defense, but let's go back to um, Mitchell Robinson last season, his, his um, last season stats and his career stats. So he played 15. I didn't even know. It was like when I was reading the stats, I got a bit depressed. Um, <laughs> I, I thought he played, but he only played 15. We talking about these other guys. We don't want them right. to get injured. And I'm looking at, so 59 games, 27 minutes a game, eight and a half points, 9.4 rebounds, you know, obviously about a assist a game, which is an improvement, you know, for Mitch. I actually saw Mitch make some, you know, it didn't happen all the time, but some some good passes actually. 67% from the field, zero. He doesn't take three pointers. 48.4% from the free throw line. An offensive rating of 142.3. And a defensive rating of 109.5 for a net rating of 32.8. And our usage is usage is even though it's just two percent. And then on a career, seven and a half points, eight rebounds, 71 percent field goal percentage, 52 percent um, free throw percentage. And this is the thing with Mitch. Let me see if I, um, I have it here. Mm, I don't think I have it. His free throw percentage has gotten worse every year in the league from like 60% to 50 some odd percent to 40. 48.4, um, you have it here. Yeah, 48.4. Um, and I think last year it was 48.6. So each year he's been in the league, his free throw percentage has <clears throat> gone down. I'm not quite sure, um, you know, what, you know, what, what that's about. But let's 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 take um, these guys in turn. Let's let's talk about um, Towns. And again, we're talking about the center position. We're not talking about the power forward position. You know, just your overall thoughts on Towns and are the Knicks 
a better team with Carl Anthony Towns at that center spot versus um, Mitch. Uh, so let's start at the top with um with um Jarrell. We'll mix it up. Queen, you don't you don't have their block per game number here. Oh, I don't. But I will pull it up. Let me pull it up. All right. Um, I guess we'll talk about um Carl Anthony Towns first. Talk about Cat. Um, for me, he is soft with two T's, but <laughs> he's very talented. He's one of the most talented um bigs in the league. Mm-hmm. But you know, he's soft. His playoff um resume isn't isn't all that cracked up to be, and he's very, very expensive. Uh, I think it would be a net positive for all three of these dudes compared to Mitch because I think they're more talented than Mitch, especially offensively, but they all give up something defensively. Um, like if we got Cat, I think it's an upgrade for Mitch. Is he a better fit for the team? Yeah, because he can shoot, but he'd be giving up a lot of stuff that Mitch does on defense. So, um uh, are you are you asking? Would we would rather the, have him? No, would the Knicks be a better team with oh, with, with with Towns at center over um, um Mitch? All three of them, in my opinion, are better players than, than yeah. Me. But would the Knicks be a better team? Yeah, I think they'd be a better team because I would hope they would actually fit the roster to fit Cat Turner and Alton. I mean, um, Aiden. Uh, We're going I, with Towns first. Okay, with well, Towns. Okay, for well, right. definitely Towns because he's uber talented. But it's just is what 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 is he going to be like in the playoffs? We might have another Randall situation because the last time, you know, there's the last some um, examples that he has had in the playoffs, he hasn't played very well and he hasn't won anything since he's been in the league. And he was the number one pick in the draft, so the talent is there. But um, would we be a better team? Yes, but it would just take them shaping the roster around him. He's too talented to just throw him in the corner like you have to have um stuff available for cat like he's he'll be the exact opposite of mitch yeah i just want to add the 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 blocking the blocks like aj act so last season it was he only played 27 games last season 0.6 blocks but every other season it was Anywhere from 1.1 to 1.7 blocks a um, blocks a game, and he's another one that hasn't been healthy. Let me just read out his games played over the last eight seasons: 82, 82, 82, 77, 35, 50, 74, 29. Mm. Right. Last season, he shot 36.6% from three on 5.7 attempts per game. That's pretty good volume, actually, and 36.6% is above league average for a center. And career-wise, he's a 39.5% shooter from three on 4.2 attempts per game. And similar to Randall, he's only had 16 career playoff games. So right. I think that's some of the argument for Randall has been we haven't been a perennial a perennial playoff team. We haven't been there year in and year out for guys to get the experience. Um and that's similar for Cat. 16 about the same. Both of them have 16. Randall might even have less cuz the Knicks have played 16 since Randall has been here and I think Randall has missed one or two games. Um Right. He um, he did. And and did he miss any games in the Cleveland series? Then he missed the first one. I know he missed the first one in Miami. I forgot, to be honest. He got injured in the clinching game. I thought against Cleveland. Okay, I don't think he he played. Okay, Okay. so he missed one. So he has fifteen playoff games. And as far as the contract is concerned, for Robinson, four years, sixty million. You know, and it's a descending contract like his free throw mm-hmm. percentage. 15 <laughs> million, 14.3 million. Queen, you're wrong. You're wrong. <laughs> right. You ain't had to finish the price. You could. <laughs> 12.9. Um, oh, I have it here for Mitchell Robbins 60%, 56.8%, 49.1%, 48.6%. Forty-eight point. Like, I've never seen anything like it. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Towns is you know five year two hundred and fifteen million, 
So we have 40 million, 43 million, 45.9 million, and then there's a player option for 48.9 million before he becomes an unrestricted free agent. Keep in mind, though, that relative to the cap, it's going to go down. The percentage will go down every year relative to the cap, what his percentages are against the cap. Um, Jeff? Well, you know, I'm uh, staff and I are like co-presidents of the Mitchell Robinson fan club. So uh, I, I want to put that out there first, just so that people understand where I'm coming from. But uh, I think Jarrell hit it on the head. He's the Carl uh, Anthony Towns is the anti Robinson. He is one of the most special offensive fives in the game, probably top three. I think he's in class with Jokic and, and Embiid, and he's that good on offense. But as good as he is on offense, if we have him with the team as currently constructed, that is probably one of the worst starting fives defensively I've ever seen. You've got a part-time defender in Randall, a part-time defender. Well, I guess somebody's got to go in the trade. So it depends who we get in back. But I, I I can see at most one a uh, starting lineup, probably one really good defender in it, possibly two on the wing. But yeah, it's it's really tough defensively with 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 with, with him out there, you know. I mean, Mitch covers a lot of mistakes. He's not perfect. But I also think that usage matters, too. And I think with with uh, with guys like Brunson and guys like uh, Randall, who already have a lot of usage, and if Barrett is still here, he's a high-usage guy, too. Do we want to add another? One of those guys would have to. Would have okay. To. Yeah, there's no way but, you get money-wise. But even so. Let's say it's Randall. I'm just using that as an example. I'm not saying that's the best, but let's just say you still have Barrett, who's a high usage guy. You have RJ, who's a high usage guy, and you have Towns as a high usage guy. So you've got, you still have three high usage guys. Um, I, I, if you make the argument that his outside shooting is better than, uh, is 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 better than Randall's, and so he spreads the floor better for Barrett and for for. Uh, for for um, Brunson, I, I'll buy that. Very incredibly gifted offensive player. Um, you know, and, I, and I'll say this with all three of these guys. Well, two of them. I'll save one. But for two of these th- of these three guys, I would like them on our team, and I would like Mitch as the backup to them because I think that gives you two different things. I think if you could run Mitch with 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 your second unit. I, 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 and play really fast with Josh Hart and Emmanuel quickly uh, and Obi Toppin if he's still here, but he would probably go in that trade, I would imagine. But, well, not if Randall does. But anyway, uh, it, again, it depends on what we're paying, but we'd be paying a lot of money for a one-sided player. I mean, you're talking about uh, almost a third or a third of the price to, to – for, for what Mitch gives, uh, for me, I in this NBA, if it's not Jokic and it's not Embiid, I don't know that I want to be spending, uh, you know, almost a third of my salary cap on a five. I, I don't I don't think that's the way of the future in the NBA. Maybe maybe I'm wrong, but I, I don't think that's the game anymore. Yeah, that that that's definitely a fair point. I yeah, I do think the Knicks would have to retool defensively um if you're gonna bring townsend as a five and i hear people saying he's a four he's a four he's a four he wouldn't play the four for the knicks you know he would he would play the five because the reason you would want cat at the five is to stretch the defense i don't really see the advantage of having him at power forward I don't see the advantage of having him at power, you know, at 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 power forward. I mean, unless you're saying he's better than Randall, he probably he is, you know, just in, in terms of from a skill set um, perspective. But the advantage comes when you put him at four. Excuse me, at the five because he brings those centers out. Those centers can't stay underneath the key. That opens up the key for Brunson and Randall or Barry, whoever um, is still here. Putting him at the four. I mean, at team wise, 
I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess we would be slightly better. Pairing him with Randall at the five, we would be much better. But I agree with you. Defensively, um, we would have to retool. And as far as usage is concerned, the Knicks have three guys who right now have usage over 25%. And in, in RJ um, Brunson and Randall, three guys with that type of usage. So it would just be a different, a different three guys. Um, Boogie, um, you know, what are we a better team with Towns over Mitch? Do the Knicks get to the Eastern? Can the Knicks get to the Eastern Conference Finals? I'm keeping Mitch. And Lee, I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave, you know, that clown right over there in bottom and belly where he's at. I'm not swapping Mitch out for him. And I'm quite sure that it's gonna be he's gonna win us like four more games. He's going to have some games where he's going to have 32, 35, 34, and he's going to have great games. And he's going to talk to the announcers after the game is over. But when it get down to that get down, you know what I'm saying, I I, I just don't want no parts of, uh, of him. You know what I'm saying? He just – he hasn't led nobody nowhere with all that money he's got, you know what I'm saying, and being the number one and all that. He hasn't led or took nobody nowhere. And this is what – this what he's got about eight years in, somewhere around there. Eight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's too late in the game for him. I don't see his game getting no better, no nothing like that. So, you know, I mean, I got enough offense on this team right here where I think I could be satisfied, you know, with Mitch, you know, staying in his position, doing what he doing, you know, and hopefully he can contribute a little something more. But for somebody that's not going to he's, – he's not going to give me an effort and already got – if Julius is still here – I got Julius that he gets in his ways. No, I'm not going to have both of them guys. No, I'm not. I'm not. That's just not. I'm going to keep Mitch with the Knicks. Okay, AJ? Well, um, I I love Mitch. He's my guy. But I would. I, I think with Carl Anthony Towns, uh, the team would be better. And I'll tell you why, right? So our concern is defense, right? First of all, I don't think it's a huge drop off between Cat and Mitch uh, defensively. You, you're right. The, the only, the big, the biggest difference is Mitch covers a lot of pe- other people's mistake that Cat doesn't do that. But he's not, he's not a terrible defender, uh, Cat. But here's the real reason why I would, tr- I would, I think we'd be better, right? Tom Thibodeau, what's his claim to fame, right, as a coach? He's a defensive-minded head coach, right? So our, prob- our problem with Tom Thibodeau, he's – at least that's what we think, is offensively he can't come up with the with the schemes to make it work, to make it flow better offensively, right? So if we have guys that are already off- offensive-minded guys, so it makes his offense easier, but he could come up with the defensive schemes to make this work. So he'll figure it out defensively. Offensively, these guys will figure it out on the court. Defensively, Tom Thibodeau is going to figure it out. So I think we'd be better off with a slightly weaker defensive player, but a much better offensive player. I think we'd be would be a better team. But I would I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to trade Mitch for him. But if it happens, I'm not going to lose I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I'll, I'll be fine with. Yeah, I mean, I think overall, I would like to put our money into the into another um, position other than the other than the center position. But just for this particular question, in a heartbeat, and I got to be honest, and I know the tomatoes are coming. I think Mitchell Robinson is overrated. I think Mitchell Robinson is overrated. His it, people act like his pick and roll defense is like number one. Like we can't, we gotta keep Mitchell Robinson. He covers up so so much. We we can't live with we can't live without him. There are people. There's other players in the league who can who can pick and roll defense. You know, and okay, we may not get the rim protection that you get from a Mitchell Robinson, but we're gonna get the defensive rebounds that we need. And maybe we not we might not get a center who will be on the boards and give us the offensive rebounds. But if you build the team out another way with a traditional offense, do you really need, you know, to, I mean, it's great to have offensive rebounded, but the Knicks depended on 
offensive rebounders and second chance points as part of their formula to score. We would just need a different offensive formula. I think Mitch is so limited offensively that what he's doing defensively, which I think is a bit, it's good, but people are acting like it's, it's like all world. It's just the, 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 the trade-off is just too much right now, especially the way the NBA um, is going. You just can't have a one-sided player like that. They just run you off the floor. You just can't, you just can't play like that. It's particularly in the playoffs. You can get away with it in regular season, but particularly in the playoffs. Now, in all fairness, if we're talking about the Mitchell Robinson in Cleveland, like that's what make like you if you got somebody that's giving you, you know, a 15 points, even if it's on lobs and offensive rebounds, you're getting 15 points a game, you're getting 12 rebounds, you're getting two blocks a game, you're getting the activity where guys can't even come in the key. He's not scoring for us, but he's creating havoc defensively. That's just not Mitch. That's just not Mitch. And I, I just think that we we bought into the narrative. Yes, he's good defensively. Yes, he does cover up for our poor perimeter play. But I think we've bought into the narrative so much that we don't even see when Mitch have bad games. Like we don't even see the games when he's out of position and he's not playing good pick and roll defense. And he's not like we don't even see it because the narrative is what he brings on defense makes up for what he doesn't what he doesn't do on offense. And I think it's just to the point where he just it just doesn't. It just doesn't. So if you get somebody that's three times better on offense and maybe I don't know 30% worth worse on defense, I I I think it's a a a good trade-off. The only reason I wouldn't do it to Jeff's point is I don't want to have that much money tied up in the center. I would prefer to have it tied up in a wing. But if money wasn't an issue, yeah, in a heartbeat, I would take um, Towns over um, Mitchell Robinson. Because you got to keep in mind, I'm not – in terms of it making the team better, because you also have to keep in mind that we're not asking Towns to come here and, and – and, um, well, maybe we are. Maybe some people are asking him to come in and be the, the number one guy. It, it amazes me why certain guys in this league get bad raps and other guys don't. There's only a few players in this league who've won championships. There's only a few players in this league who have carried their teams. But for whatever reason, he has the rap of not doing it in 16 playoff games, mind you. But there's other guys all over the league that we want that don't have that winning. We everybody we wanted Bill. What has Bill won? What did Bill do with Washington, even when he was there with John Wall? Nothing. But for whatever reason, some guys get this bad rap of nah, we don't want him. He ain't really do nothing with his team. But other guys we want who ain't do nothing with their team either. So I don't I don't get it. But like I said, I'm with you guys in the sense that of the salary, but I'm not with you in the terms of what has he, um, you know, what has he done? Um, because none of these other guys has done anything either. Can I ask a question that I just don't know the answer to, and maybe y'all do? What is the relationship between Towns and Thibodeau like? Like, do you think that's something he would welcome back, or or were they on rocky ground when he was there? I honestly Shit, don't I'm know. With you. What has Levine won? This is the point I'm trying to make. None of these guys haven't won anything, but for whatever reason, some guys we want, some guys we don't, and we use, oh, they haven't won. None of these guys have won anything. Paul George hasn't won anything. We talk about his two-way play, but nobody wants to remember those game sevens in which him and Kawhi didn't show up. Well, and Doc Rivers got fired after that. Well, Queen, we don't even have to go outside of what we're talking about, right? Some people say, well, I don't want Towns because he ain't never win nothing. I'll keep Mitch. But what has Mitch won? <laughs> you know, we, we don't even have to go look at these other guys. Mitch haven't won anything, you know. And I, I, it's just not a, a fair playing field. You know, some people get judged um, harsher than others. 
it it's doesn't make sense. I mean, you got to compare them for exactly the same way. You got to bring the same the same criticism and the same kind of comparison between all of them to get a fair assessment of what it would be to swap those two guys. You know? I think it just go <clears throat> when it comes to fans and players. I think it just depends on if who they like and who they don't. Steph, right? It's really that simple. Like if. if especially when it comes to people that we drafted. Like if Mitch was drafted by the Kings, nobody in the chat would give a damn about Mitchell Robinson. But he's ours though. So, and plus he was a second round pick. So it's like a come up story too. So there's a lot of personal feelings when it comes to Mitchell Robinson. He's not just a, uh, it's not because of what he just do on the basketball court. Right. I don't think. Right. But, but let me ask you that question as a follow-up question is for, for those on the panel, and, and the chat can answer this too. We already know where Margaret Ed- Edwards is with it. Hmm. Does that matter to you, um, whether a guy was drafted here, traded here, <laughs> or signed in free agency? Not one smidgen. No, hell no. I'm a Knicks fan. I don't care if we drafted him, who drafted him, if he was drafted at all. No, I don't care, personally. Whoever gives us the best chance to win, put him out on the floor. I don't care how we got him. I'm with you, Jarrell. Uh, same thing here, man. The nature of the business. We're here to win. You know, and that's oh, – I don't want to leave the, the Mitchell Robinson talk, so let's, let's stick to him. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I mean – Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, and I'm not saying that because Mitch is the only player that gets that treatment. A lot right, of that's, that's, that where treatment. That, that's where I didn't want to go because right, there right. are other players on the team Definitely. that get that treatment. But, you know, there's guy, guys we want to hold on to. Like, yeah, come on, man. We've been watching – we've been watching and playing ball all our lives. We right. know those guys. We can see talent. We could see they're not the one. We could see it. But we want to hold right. on to those guys. Because we drafted them, so yeah, we're always going to overvalue players that we actually drafted. That's just the nature of the sport. Like Knicks fans aren't the only ones who do it. Every every fans of the teams that do it. I mean, remember remember the the conversation used to go on and on and on the arguments, the fights about Frank right. Nilla, Frank Nelikina. Mm. Right. Where Frank now? Right. Yeah. Same thing with Cam Reddish. Before he got out of here, remember? And he started yeah. with Portland a few games. Then he started coming off the bench. And then he right. was D- D- DNP. Right. For Kevin Knox. Right. Yeah, I was going to say, let me ask you how this. Here's another one. If Grimes is another one. Back- hold on, hold on. This is another one. We, we drafted him. And they wanted to play here. If you want to play in New York, you're gonna get a lot of rope. This is yeah. this is the second one. Right. Behind the you're on the microphone saying that you actually wanted to play here. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna get a lot of rope. Yeah. Go ahead, boy. You sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that goes along. If if I'd have been RJ, I'd have been saying the same thing because I wouldn't have wanted to go to Memphis, Tennessee myself. Mm-hmm. I'd have been saying the same thing about I want to be here well, in New York. Yeah, but, definitely not Cleveland. Yeah. My thing is this: Do you feel the same way about Mitch? If if Grimes is averaging a solid fourteen points per game, forty-one percent from 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 the field and thirty-nine percent from the trade, and RJ is doing the same thing, but he's averaging nineteen. But his his um his shots, his three-point shot, all that is up. Well, then. In the percentages, do you still feel the same way about Mitch as you do now? Because I understand we 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 need to get you know some more productions from the center position, but if them other guys is doing what they supposed to do, me I'm all right with some. Everybody ain't got to score, but if they're not, if I'm not getting that the other productions from them other guys, that doesn't mean that I have to go and skip and just go to the center. To try to find that makeup production that them guys is not giving me. So if them guys, mm-hmm. go ahead. Sorry, no finish. Yeah, I just wanted to know if them guys is you know, if they if their productions is all the way up, are, are we still you know, talking of this and 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 wondering the same situation? If you would have asked me that a week ago, I would have said no, because I would have said you know you can have one person in the league that can't on in your starting lineup that can't score, right? But 
just seeing how Gobert was like when you get in deep into the playoffs, mm -hmm. Gobert couldn't even play, and he's right. a better defensive player than Mitch. He couldn't even play. They had to play him. I, I just feel like the NBA is you got to be at least a threat, right? You did. You got to be at least a threat to keep the defense honest. Otherwise, they're going to use your guy. In the regular season, you can get away with it. But in the playoffs, when you're seeing a team game in and game out, they are going to plan for that. That guy is going to be able to roam. That guy is going to be able to do a lot of things. So now, and you know, listen, my takes evolve over time. Yeah, I'm starting to think that you got to at least have a, um, you got to at least be a threat particularly in the playoffs. It's just going to make it hard. They can load up. There's so many things that um, they can do. They did that with Gobert. You know, as I, as I mentioned earlier, if you remember that Utah series, they couldn't even play them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm starting to think, yeah, if we, because now I'm thinking about a chip, you know, and it's not just a regular season. It's about going deep into the playoffs. I do think you need to have a center because even Boston, they got Williams, who's in in like a Mitch mode, but they also got Horford. Yeah, I'm about to say he he plays more than Williams does. And they also got Horford, so teams can't. They can put Williams in and you know whatever. Then when teams try to do what they want to do, they not stuck. Right. They can bring Horford in, and when Horford comes in, he changes everything for them. See, that's, you know, that's that's a great point when you bring up him. See, that's the alternate, you know what I'm saying, big that you can switch, that you can swap out depending on your matchup. Like when you say, you know, far as what, um, you know, if we got that Mitch, you know what I'm saying, like played against Cleveland, that's because that matchup is different. The matchup with Cleveland is totally different with him and Bam. You talking about an athletic dude, you know, that he's not even going to – that can grab the ball, rebound, and bring it up, handle the rock and all that. You know what I'm saying? You're going to need to be able to swap that guy out like that. And, yeah, I get it as far as um, um, the big man you just said over there in um, in, uh, in Minnesota. I do remember I do remember when that young boy over there in L.A. with the Clippers, you know what I'm saying, he dropped 41 on him. They kept putting him in a high pick and roll. But that's because that's not his matchup. Now I do believe I I do believe we need to have an alternate center, an alternate center. But you're gonna need a big that can get down there and get dirty, dirty. You know what I'm saying? At certain times, you know, and you know, and and we do know that Mitch will he will play against Cleveland. We do know, you know, even though MB gonna do what he does, but he does that pretty much it. But he will fight with him. Towns is gonna bow down to him. He'll break him up. Actually, Towns plays really well against MB. They got some sort of personal. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they, 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 they fought. The time, they <laughs> fight. They would be good. Yeah, but that's not somebody else, not MB. He actually goes hard against him. That, that was the real <laughs> fight right there. Remember, they went at it, like choking but, each other. And But to Boogie's point, that is probably the only person that he is tough against, though. <laughs> right. Well, let me ask you this. And this is not just for Towns. This is also for um, Levine and, and, and Turner. Can guys, do you feel like these guys are who they are, or do you feel like environment matters? That mm. coming into a new environment where you're being held accountable, there are certain expectations. Can your career change, or do you feel like, nah, just who they are right now, that's just who they're going to be? Mm -hmm. That that question is that are we still going to go through these? I know it's getting late. Are we going through them individually, or you just want to group? Yeah, all yeah, these I'm a, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm gonna go real quick. Because I was going to say that really, that really is a question for Aiden because I've seen him quit on his team twice. All right. So, so if he we'll, come here. <laughs> right, right. The, would environment make a difference? Exactly. All right, cool that. Okay. See, you got to, you got to, you know, write it down. Or maybe you got, your memory might be good. Enough. I got you. I got you. <laughs> all right. Let's, let's go to Turner. And all of these guys, he played actually 62 games last year, 29.4 minutes, 18.7 and a half rebounds. 1.4 assists, shot 54.8% from the field, 37.3% from the three-point line, 78.3% from the free throw line, and I think it was 2.3 blocks per game um, last last season. I will I will double check that. But this is another one with injury history. So let me read out his 
games played over his career. 60, 81, 65, 74, 62, 47, 42, 62. Last season, he shot 37.3% from the three like I have here on four attempts per game. Just not a lot. And um, But 37.3% is above league, league average for centers. And career-wise, he shoots 35.3% from three on about three attempts um, per game. And he's played in 26 playoff games. The last time was 2019-2020. Would the Knicks be – oh, let me get to his um, contract as well. He only has a two-year – so he, he signed a two-year $40.9 million contract. Next year he'll be making 20.9, and the year after that, 19.9, and then he's an unrestricted um, free agent. So the same question, are the Knicks a better team um, with him, a better team, not necessarily him versus Mitch, though that has to be part of the equation, I guess. Are the Knicks a better team? Uh, would they be an Eastern Conference Finals team with him? Um, and, uh, you know, this is this would have been a good question for Towns. Would you need to make other changes in the start and lineup, you know, to, to, to make it work? Let me just read Paris Duggar. Appreciate you, um, Paris Duggar. Great hanging out with you last night at the draft party. KP going to have a hard time with an 82 must-win grind. Yeah. Yeah, because they're trying to do some things um, o- over there. No, 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 no doubt about it. Appreciate you. Um, so, Boogie, let's start with you. We're going to do you, Ajay, Jeff, and Jarrell. I like Turner. I like Turner. And the only thing with Turner is his health issue. Um, but the thing is, you know, when he's playing on that perimeter, Julius is you getting down in that paint because when he hit with him, is, uh, what's his name? Sabonis was together. Sabonis was in that paint. And he still was on that perimeter. But I like him. You know, he's going to defend. He's going to defend the glass first thing first. You gotta have to always defend the glass, you know, on our team because the lack of days of cool, you know what I'm saying, the the lack that we lack in defense in front of us. So he defends the glass. He's gonna make you alter shots when he don't block them, and he's gonna rebound. And then on the offensive end, he can face the rim, and he at times he still can, you know, what I'm saying post up with his back to the basket, you know, what I'm saying and make baskets. You know, I like his situation. But I'm still gonna throw him. In, I'm gonna throw him in to where it's like you said. You wonder if you would. You could have said the same thing with Town. I still would need another piece. You know what I'm saying to be in that offense. I would still need a number, a, a, a three. You know what I'm saying a three to go along with him being the center and Julius being at the four. And then they got chemistry. They have. They got friendship together. They don't work out together during the off season and everything. And that's important too. You know what I'm saying? As far as you working and get together with guys, you know what I'm saying, who you don't play with, you know, um, compared to working out with guys who you do play with, play with, you know. So I like Turner in this situation, you know, over Mitch, you know. But if it's any way possible, if it's any way possible, I can keep Mitch and I can go ahead and, uh, and get rid of Hardenstein, I'm going to do that. Because what Turner does is what some of the things that Hartenstein does. So I don't need two of those same guys. I need the other opposite guy, which would be Mitch. I need him to be totally opposite of what Turner does. The, for for simple fact, like in times like we play, key, uh, play against Cleveland, now I got two dudes I can match up with them. Not saying that Hartenstein can't do that, but Hartenstein's game is a little bit more closer to Turner's game than what it is to – um to um, Mitch game the way I think about it. So I would like to keep, you know, Mitch, you know, and hopefully he'll be cool with being a coming off the bench type player. And I spoke about that the other day. I don't know if he'll be able to do that. But if I could get Mitch coming off the bench behind that guy and, you know what I'm saying, cleaning up that glass and, and getting that ball out so I, I, um, our bench guys can go ahead and run, I'll be, I'll, I'll be real cool with this situation as far as bringing Turner over here, you know, um, to the Knicks. Yeah, the only thing with that is how much minutes is left. You know, um, just in terms of salary-wise, 
you know, he's much cheaper than town. So you can have money left with Mitch money, maybe to go out and get a three and then get you a cheap center behind Turner, because how many minutes is going to be left behind him? That being said, he gets injured too, but so does Mitch. They probably running neck, neck and neck, you know, as far as games, you know, games played um, per season. Um, do you think, we could get to the Eastern Conference Finals with Turner. Like, if Turner was on our team last season, you think we could have got to? And and let's let's keep in mind, Turner has an All NBA. Um, he was all not excuse me, defensive All Defensive Team. He has at least one All Defensive Team. Um, and somebody said in the chat, he's not a great rebound. Neither is Mitch. Everybody is thinking about the offensive rebounds, defensive rebounds. That's how that's what ends a defensive possession. The defensive rebound. The Mitch is not a really good defensive rebounder. So I don't know if there's um much difference. Um, if there's much difference there. Um last um this season that just passed, we turn on this team, we go to the I be honest with you, I think we go all the way to the championship. Mm. If Turner was in that starting lineup, you know, I think, I think, you know what I'm saying, we could have went because Turner would have done some things, different things that would have got us over the hump against Miami. You know what I'm saying? A, a, a lot of, a few of them games that we lost was close, close games. They could have went either way going down late in the game. And one of them games, we just did not rebound. Period, you know, and that the, the, um that game where we gave up um I think it was game four we gave up like seven offensive rebounds in the fourth quarter something like that um I think we knocked Miami off and I really think we was gonna beat Boston I really I really did because nobody on our team was scared of Boston our biggest threat and our biggest problem was Miami yeah no doubt and somebody said in the um in the chat and we we may be glossing over them this he is a really good rim protector yeah. a really good rim protector and let me throw my twist in there you a healthy turner a healthy turner and a healthy paul george's problems <laughs> problems yeah that don't that, want pg yeah i mean health is that's a big that's a biggie yeah, because then you have two, both of them guys, their contracts expire at the reset time with Brunson and Julius. That's the thing. You the reset. window. But Jeff, I think the same the thing with Turner. All of them guys would. Turner, too. Yeah, that's why I said there's four Turner. guys. All four of them. Turner, Joy, I, Julius, and Brunson. Four guys. Man, that clears up. Then you can figure out what you can do. We can figure out, yo, how we going to do it? How we going to bring it? Can we run it back? Who can take a pay cut? Can we add another person? So many things you can do, man. That's a lot of money to reset. Deep public enemy. That's what I just said. He's good. That's the one thing he's good at. I'm not talking. Listen, rebounds, and you guys notice there's offensive rebounds and there's defensive rebounds. I'm talking about defensive rebounding. Man. That's how you end a defense. That's how your defensive possession ends with a defensive rebound. He's not a good defensive rebounder. That's what I'm saying. But he's a good, he's a great elite offensive. He, I mean, but Mitch is an elite offensive rebounder because that's his primary role on the on the on the team. Like he just sits down there and waits for the rebound. He, he's not a threat to not even touch the ball for the most part. So it seems like by design, just like when he was hurt, Isaiah Hartenstein became one of the best offensive rebounders in the league. Why? It's because that's the way our offense is designed. Like he doesn't – when he um when he replaced Mitch, when Mitch got hurt, he pretty much was Mitch's role. He didn't touch the ball. He didn't shoot the ball. His job was the offensive rebound. So I know like Mitch is a good offensive rebounder, but that is his primary role on that side of the ball. He's supposed to be a good offensive rebounder. Right. Organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did it in Cleveland. Come on. That's not a season. Look at look at look at Mitchell Robinson's defensive rebounds throughout the so what he did it against Cleveland. So now he's a great defensive rebounder because he did it in one series. Come on, guys. Um, anyway, 
Um, yeah, who's next? And then maybe we then we gotta move on to, to Aiton. So you're right at the time, you're right. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll go real quick. I mean, that that's an easy choice, man. It you know, it's it's a very you, you lose very little on defense and you gain a whole lot more on offense. That's very easy. We worried about uh, pick and roll defense. How about executing the pick and roll? All the three guys you have up there can can execute pick, on offense, can execute pick and roll much better than Mitchell Robinson. Um, again, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't lose any sleep if we swap, if if we put uh, uh, Miles Turner, you know, in place of Mitchell Robinson. And this past season, if we had Miles Turner, yes, we would have, we, we probably would have beat Miami. I mean, not, not that Mitchell Robinson is the reason we lost, but we'd have another uh, offensive weapon that we could have used against Miami. So that's that's easy. Yes, he, he would. I would do it, and he would have been a better player. He would have made the team better. Easy. Yeah, he's actually my number one choice because of the rim protection, the, the, the defense, and the salary. Which would gives us that flexibility to to still go out and get um to get a three. If the Knicks can pull that off, I'll take back everything I've said about the <laughs> 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 office. Um, Jeff, and then we'll move on to Aiden. Well, I'll be pretty quick, but I, I I've you've been saying that name. I've been hearing Miles Turner, Miles Turner, Miles Turner for about three years now. Miles Turner's name has always come up you know, in some form or fashion. But what I'm thinking, and this may not be a good thought, so I'm not, not surprising coming from me, but if you could do a deal with Indiana that sent Obi Toppin and Isaiah Hartenstein and maybe a f- protected first rounder for Turner, and I don't know if they would do that deal or not. I'm just using that as an example. And start Turner – and you have Turner and Mitch that gives Thibodeau 48 minutes of rim protection that he likes. He has two different looks that he can give with a guy that can that can stretch the floor. I really like what Miles Turner can bring to the game and bring to this team. I think I think he's a, he's super valuable. I think that you, the only thing is you hope that they don't get hurt at the same time. I guess, but. Uh, um, I love I love the idea of a of a Miles Mitch combo in in actuality, and I don't I don't see why it couldn't work that way. I just um, think it's a money it's it's just a money issue. That's thirty five million dollars. I just think you can use that money. I just think you can put that money toward a wing, and just get a center that's going to play spot minutes and and be a spot starter as well because you know he may he may get injured. You could absolutely you could. I don't have any problem with that either. Um, I would just I I don't know. Does I I don't know if Indiana would want Mitchell Robinson. That's the only thing that they do. I mean, we're all here say, uh, saying, you know, Mitch, Mitch, Mitch. So if I mean, rather Miles, Miles, Miles. So you're gonna probably have to throw something else in there if you're gonna do. You know, I don't think they're gonna want to do Mitch, Miles for Mitch straight up either. Yeah, but um, the thing about it is Mitch is on a longer contract and he's on a descending um contract and they'll save um they'll save money, but they're going to have the same issues um uh, offensively um with with Mitch. Sherwin, this is what I believe. Turner is not a a a good defense. He made an all defensive team. Did Mitchell Robinson ever make an all defensive team? And even if he's not, he can play defense. You put him in the right environment, you let him know what you need him to do. He should be able to play whatever defense Tibbs want him to play. What was Booker doing before Monty Williams got there? You put these guys in the right environment, I think he would flourish defensively for us. And one other thing I'd like to say about Mitch, and I, I think his defensive rebounding has improved. It has. And I also think when you play beside an excellent rebounder like Julius Randle is that deflates your, your defensive rebounding numbers is Randle is an outstanding rebounder, especially on the defensive end. And so I think when you play to, when those two pair together and especially Mitch is really good at blocking out, 
and then Randall goes and gets the ball, which he's amazing at. Um, I, I think that has a little bit of context there too, but um, I don't think that changes my opinion of the discussion. I just think that, that he's he's an improving rebounder, and I, I and I think he's he's not a great he's not as good an offensive rebound. I mean, defense as he is offense, but I think he's a solid defensive rebound. Not spectacular, but solid. Right, but but again, it's not even about Turner and Mitch in isolation. It's about the Knicks as a team. And I just think if you got Turner at your center position, blocking the rim, he can play pick and roll defense. If he's having some issues, Tibbs will straighten him out. As long as he's a willing defender, he has the tools, and he can hit the three. He can stretch the defense. <sighs> The Knicks can make that um, happen. I, I think that would, out of all three, he would be my 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 um, number one guy. And I'm not sure if the Knicks would need to make changes around the perimeter like you would need to do with Towns. I agree. You know, I, I would like to have better perimeter defenders anyway. Um, but even if you right. don't, you got any rate? 2.3 blocks per game. Can somebody check that? I believe it was 2.3 blocks per game. 2.3 blocks per game. Correct. You know, and can shoot the three. I mean, come on. Two point eight yep, um the year before that and three point four, which led the league the year before that. An elite rim protector. Twenty seven years old. And twenty seven years old. And and taller than I thought. I don't know why I thought he was like six nine, six ten. I, they say he's six eleven. When I was reading it, it said six eleven. Yeah. Yeah, he, wow. he would he would actually be very good for us. Yes. Now, now, now that I'm thinking about it, he would be very good for us. Yeah, and 78 percent from the free throw line. Very good. You know, you, he's so, a terrific he's, player. He's like right a player. Player. Them. and a two way play on a on a um you know and and the Knicks would have to resign him, but again, they get to make those decisions. You know, depending on how well they play, they may decide they're gonna they're gonna keep Turner and and whatever and move on from. I mean, we don't know, but if the Knicks can do that, that would be that would be great. Anyway, let's let's do eight in um real quick. Sixty seven games last. I mean, games are at a premium. Sixty seven <laughs> games <laughs> last year. <laughs> Thirty minutes. 18 points, 10 rebounds, 1.7 assists, shot 58.9 percent from the field. 29.2 percent from a three-point line i guess i don't know is that enough to keep you know somebody honest he's not a three-point shooter oh okay and 76 percent from the um free throw line jeff we'll start with you are the knicks i know everybody it, it the the conversation shrinks down to eight and versus mitch but are the knicks a better team with eight <clears throat> man in that center position Will we get the space we need? Because this is really when somebody said it in the chat. It's not about Mitch; it's about spacing. Will we get the spacing we need with Aiden? Aiden, um, and would we would we have gone to the Eastern Conference Finals with him? I'm not an Aiden fan. I don't like its motor. I, I the rebounding numbers are good. I don't know if it's. I'd like to see the percentages, the rebound rates compared with you know with with the other guys. Um, but, but I'm not a huge Aiton fan. I feel like, uh, I think Jarrell said it earlier. I feel like he quit on his team a couple of seasons now. I, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. There's just something about Aiton that kind of rubs me the wrong way. And I, and I, and I can't necessarily put my finger on it, but again, I don't want to be paying $30 million for my starter at center when you can get just as good a production for Turner for $10 million less. I mean, that to me makes a lot more sense from your roster building perspective. And, and I think this is a wing league. I think you, you need to, I don't think Aiton is, is, is the type of player you win around. I mean, he's got all kinds of talent around him in Phoenix the last two years and they didn't, they didn't go very far. Um, so I, I think that that's a knock against him. Uh, you know, I, I do, do you need a, a a player of his offensive skill set in the modern NBA? I mean, yes, is it, it's better than Mitch's. I grant that uh, uh, every day of the week. But but uh, I just 
I don't know. I, I don't know that Aiton is the right fit next to next to the players that we have. That's just my personal opinion. But I, I'm not set in stone. Maybe maybe you can change my mind. But but something about Aiton to the Knicks just doesn't at that. I don't want to pay thirty million dollars for for a, a center who's uh, eighteen and ten guy. I just don't. Okay, I'm just saying. But Turner and Mitch would have cost you about that too at the center position. That's a lot more minutes, and that's that's both. your I mean, in other words, you you you're talking about eight and plus a backup. I mean, and if and if uh, and if your backup is Hartenstein, that's forty million dollars of your center position, right? Instead of yeah. thirty-five, so he's yeah. still more expensive. Yeah, but you can argue he's. I, I'm not. I wouldn't want eight and two, but I mean, when people say he quit on his team, are we? This is the. Like, we don't want to give second chances to nobody but the Knicks. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we don't really know what the situ, you know, situation was. But even if he's, even if he did, I hope he's more mature now. Maybe there was something going on between the relationship with him and, you know, Monty Williams. And, and I don't know. He just wasn't able to move past it. So I get it. You're there for your team. And you're supposed to always be there for your team. And, I mean, I get it. But. Guys make mistakes, you know. Hopefully they grow up, you know, and 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 they get better. You know, we 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 gave Randall a second chance. <laughs> Some of us. <laughs> I'm about to say not everybody gave him. <laughs> no, we gave Randall no, a second. No, 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 we didn't. <laughs> Some people still want him gone. <laughs> right, right. So I mean, I'm not holding. I'm not holding it. Um, 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 uh, against against them. Um, I like I said, I just want that type of money tied up in a wing. Um, more so than a center. But anyway, um, Ajay, then Boogie and Jarrell. Aiden, again. Oh, somebody wants to know the salary. Sorry. Four years, $133 million basically. 32.4 this upcoming season, then 34, then 35.5. Then he's unrestricted. Yeah, he's, so he's getting paid just about twice. Um He's it's the same logic. You don't lose too much on defense, but you gain a whole lot on offense. All those all all three guys are net positives uh, compared to Mitchell Robinson, a, a, more of a net positive uh, than Mitchell Robinson. Um, again, I wouldn't actively look to make this trade, but if it happens, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. The De, uh, DeAndre Aiden, he's not a great three point shooter, but he's that mid range. He's got it. I mean, he's really good in that little mid range, and that mid range is very important when, especially when you run in pick and roll, because ninety percent of the time, the the guy sets the pick, mm-hmm. more, you, you, one step and you inside you within his range, and more often than not, he hit that little. I don't know what his percentage is, but he's very good at that. So, uh, yeah, you don't lose too much on defense, but you gain a whole lot more on offense. I mean, he. He scores 18 points a game compared to Mitchell Robinson's uh, eight point uh, per game. So I would, I would, I think we would have been better, uh, you know, with uh, DeAndre Aiden um, in place of Mitchell Robinson. Make this very quick. And I don't think we would need to defensively, you know, it would be great if we can get some better defense, defensive defensive um, wings. What was his blocks? Let me look up his. He's blocks. not. He's not terrible on defense, and I think, like you said, a, a different situation. He's quit on his team. I think a lot of times these guys don't play defense because they're just not in the right place. But if he's in a place where he wants to be, where he he's engaged, I think they put the effort, and we probably we'd probably have a, a better defensive output from him. About a block a game, Steph. About about a block a game. Okay. What is Mitch? One one point two. About a block and a half. Oh, one point five. Okay. So yeah. Okay. Any any? I forgot the order I said. Yeah, I think it's on it's on me. Um, I don't think he um. I don't think he adjusted and understood his what his role became once they got rid of all the defensive players on that Phoenix team and what they needed him to become. I don't think he understood it and he wasn't willing to do it. And that caused a little bit of friction about how he was feeling amongst the team where 
he was giving up on guys or whatever. You feeling they getting beat and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. you know, whatever's whatever. But I gotta I'm gonna stick with the old school rules. And the old school rules used to say, you know, people in the West they can't play in the East because they can't take the physical pounding. They need to stay out west. You know, him and Towns, they need to stay out west. He probably look good with somebody like Golden State, somewhere like that. But over here, you know what I'm saying, putting him in this big media right there. And I don't think this would be a place for him to um rejuvenate his career that um that he thinks he needs to rejuvenate, you know, and then um he's gonna give us more offense. Of course he's gonna do that. All three of them guys is gonna do that, you know what I'm saying? But is he gonna be able to handle New York City? You know what I'm saying? When things ain't going right for him, are you gonna break down? You break down in Phoenix, you know what you're gonna do here. And we're gonna let you have it. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that's see, that's one thing about Julius. We we let Julius have it. He he had it. But you know the thing about Julius? He keeps coming back and he fights. You know what I'm saying? That's what you gotta respect about him that he will face, he will face what we throw at him. I don't think this guy has it. This guy, Aiden, I don't think he has it. You know, um, he's gonna be another guy I'm gonna turn turn down and and hopefully I can do something else besides getting that money he got and clogging me all the way up, whereas I can't do other things and he's not gonna get me there. He could have got me over Miami, but I don't think he would have been able to get us through Boston. But what do we need him to do? Like he wouldn't have been our main, um, our main cog. Like he wouldn't have been a number two. When you're making money like that, I'm looking for you to dominate. You're making too much money for you not to be a dominant player. You're making too much money not to be a factor to take us somewhere where we're trying to get and we haven't been there in a long time. Him and Towns is making too much money for us to come here, for them to come here and not dominate the situation. Off top, off rip, they supposed to off them guys really, them guys really supposed to be. Them guys are supposed to be battling. They so far as bigs, they supposed to be right there behind maybe Davis. You know what I'm saying? That you got the Joker MB, maybe Davis. Them guys are supposed to be right there. But you got some bonus better than them guys. Cause he giving that heart and that effort. You know what I mean? So, you know, you getting paid all that money. I need you to I need you to be able to take me somewhere. I'm not paying you all that money and you can't you can't get me over the hump. That's for somebody that's gonna, you know, at least at least I'm gonna feel good about him coming here and give him give me a chance to fight. I don't know what these guys are gonna do. Or when they're gonna give up. When they're not gonna show up. I just don't. Right. I mean, I think that's a fair point, you know, just in terms of the collective bargaining um, agreement, you know, it, it's going to really limit, you know, what, what you're able to do. And if that guy is making that money and they can't give you that production, you can't really go out and get it anywhere else um, without, you know, going over, the, you know, hitting a second apron. However, if you're going to get eight and you're going to have to, you're going to send out salary now. So it may not be. You know, if you sending out R.J. Barrett, R.J. Barrett is making what 25? twenty five, twenty. You know, it might you might just be talking about another four or five, you know, million dollars a year between R.J. Barrett's contract and eight and per year. No, I don't. Let me see. R.J. and Ovi would work, I think, probably. Right. Let me just see something really quick because I think it goes. Nah, I don't think. Um, no. At some point, you're gonna be talking about ten million. Even if you yeah, use about eight, if, yeah, yeah. If you, if you use RJ and somebody else, now what you gonna do? You right. gonna bring quickly and bring them to the two, <laughs> and keep crimes at the three? What are we gonna do? That's nasty. That's that. I mean, <laughs> that's. Man, I could I could figure out a lot of things to do with that eight money. Whole lot of stuff. Right, right. I can go get. I can go get Javel McGee. <laughs> no, <For> two dollars. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 that that ain't even close now. 
Um, um, all right. I mean, I think, you know, um, that's what it is. We'll see what the front office does in terms of reshaping this team around Brunson and, um, you know, and Randall. Um, you know, they may not. I don't even want to say, but yeah, we'll see what they all. <laughs> let, me, um, <laughs> let me add something real quick. Uh, I actually think Miles Turner is a better fit, especially when it comes to money. Um, DeAndre Ayton is very, very talented. But for what we need, if we do want a stretch five and that's the goal, then he ain't it because he's not a three-point shooter. He He's a very good mid-range shooter. Um, he can score on the block too. So, like, the talent is there. But if the question is who's the best fit out of the three, it's not him. Right. That's all. But he, he's very talented. Like, he, we'll be a better team with him. But, yeah, he, he's not – he wouldn't be a better fit than Miles Turner, especially with that salary. Like, I like I, I, I agree with Jay Book. Like, I'm not paying a center averaging 18 points $35 million. Like, that's kind of crazy to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not rebound. And, and yeah, nine rebounds, nine to ten rebounds, and can't shoot the three. Nah. Yeah. 